the indiscriminate destruction of vegetation may alter the global climate in ways that no scientist can yet predict. It has already deadened large patches of the Earth's life-supporting skin. And yet, we ravage the Earth at an accelerated pace, as if it belonged to this one generation, as if it were ours to do with as we please. The Earth has mechanisms to cleanse itself, to neutralize the toxic substances in its system. But these mechanisms work only up to a point. Beyond some critical threshold, they break down. The damage becomes irreversible. In 1992, they measured this amount of melting in Greenland. Ten years later, this is what happened. And here's the melting from 2005. Tony Blair's scientific advisor has said that because of what's happening in Greenland right now, the maps of the world will have to be redrawn. If Greenland broke up and melted, or if half of Greenland and half of West Antarctica broke up and melted, this is what would happen to the sea level in Florida. This is what would happen to San Francisco Bay. A lot of people live in these areas. The Netherlands, one of the low countries. Absolutely devastating. The area around Beijing that's home to tens of millions of people. Even worse, in the area around Shanghai, there are 40 million people. Worse still, Calcutta and to the east, Bangladesh, the area covered includes 60 million people. Think of the impact of a couple hundred thousand refugees when they're displaced by an environmental event. And then imagine the impact of a hundred million or more. Here's Manhattan. This is the World Trade Center memorial site. And after the horrible events of 9-11, we said never again. But this is what would happen to Manhattan. They can measure this precisely, just as the scientists could predict precisely how much water would breach the levees in New Orleans. The area where the World Trade Center Memorial is to be located would be underwater. 